Now, more than a million pounds in rent arrears are owed by tenants in Newcastle, according to evidence given to a Common Select Committee this week. And it's the government's new benefit system that's being blamed. Universal Credit is intended to make the payment of benefits more simple and streamlined, but claimants have to wait six weeks to receive it. Well, that and other problems prompted Labour MPs in Gateshead and County Durham and beyond to demand that the rollout of Universal Credit should be halted. Fergus Hewson reports. <laughs> To make a claim, you'll need to complete your to-do list. Universal credit is on the way. There's even online adverts alerting people how they can claim. It's a way of wrapping up a range of benefits into one payment, and it's gradually being rolled out across the region and the country. But before it's even arrived in some places, it's causing anxiety among some people who'll have to claim it. The main concern is the length of time while, while you're changing over the benefits. So I could be without money at all for uh, three months, possibly. So, um, and I'm a single parent with a child. So that would uh, affect me a lot and cause an awful lot of stress. Those who claim universal credit have to wait at least six or seven weeks before any payment is made, sometimes longer. With that in mind, this County Durham Food Bank is gearing up for its imminent arrival. Well, there's been a 16% increase in food bank usage where universal credit has been rolled out. Here in County Durham, we're expecting uh, an influx of an extra 10 to 12 um, percent, and that puts real pressure on the food banks. Universal credit being introduced across parts of County Durham and Gateshead in the run up to Christmas. And such is the concern about that that charities and other organisations have met in this room here today to discuss how they'll help people will have to claim the new benefit. Rolling out a system of benefits which we know will increase people's indebtedness as they claim it and a period of time when people are really strapped for cash just compounds and multiplies the problem so it does, it does seem particularly inopportune that, that it's been rolled out at this time of the year. So are those fears about the introduction of universal credit well-founded or are teething problems to be expected? Well, I think inevitably you do, uh, you're going to find that there are glitches as, as a new system is introduced, particularly such a hugely important one. And I think the government has addressed it by enabling people to get advances uh, on benefits where, where they can't wait until the end of those, that number of weeks, and also to provide budgeting advice, because I think part of the flaws of the old system is that people have not have got are used to not having to budget and we all have to be able to live within our means. Universal credit was introduced across Newcastle earlier this year, one of the first areas in the country where this happened, but that led to more than a thousand council tenants falling into rent arrears and many people having to rely on food banks while they waited for a payment. At the time the City Council said that universal credit had put some vulnerable residents at risk of destitution and homelessness. So has the government learned from Newcastle's experience? So universal credit I have no issue with. The way it's being implemented I absolutely do because it's causing untold misery to many of my constituents in Newcastle and if they roll it out without ironing out these issues but also without dealing with that fundamental problem of embedding debt into our universal credit system then it's going to roll out misery. The Department for Work and Pension says Universal Credit is helping to ease people's transition into employment and those on it are moving into work faster and staying in work longer. It added that financial help is available for people waiting to have claims processed. Fergus Houston reporting. I mean, at 7 o'clock, whatever the merits of Universal Credit, all the evidence shows at the moment that all is not well with the rollout, these le increased levels of debts. It's madness to accelerate it, pause it and solve the existing problems. I think it's important to start by looking at what universal credit is intended to do, which is to say it's to make the transition to work easier and to help people get, uh, well, to, to make the most of the opportunities that are available to them. And we've seen in new statistics published today that if you're 4% uh, four four more likely to find work within six months if you're on universal credit compared to the old JSA system. So it does, as a system, deliver. In terms of the concerns that are being raised in these reports, we're seeing progress now in ironing out the, the very glitches which we're talking about. So uh, the new landlord's portal, which is designed to address the problem with rent, is coming on stream next month. 
We heard from uh, Judith Wallace in that report about, about the fact that there are advanced payments. Why not let that bed down? I mean, I'll give you another figure if you want to bandy mm. figures. Uh, people are 14% more likely to have problems with mm. debts on rent and council tax if they're on universal credit. Well, and that's real hardship. No, absolutely. I, I, no, one, no one denies that. But the, po the point is that we are now seeing progress in addressing exactly those points. So that we talk about the fact that advances are available. We need to get that message out. Okay. So 30% right. of people are now getting advance payments and 76% of people are now getting their, their first payment okay. fully on time. OK. Uh, Laura Pickock, despite the problems, there is evidence, as Simon Clark says, that people moved on to universal credit are more likely to look for work, more likely to find work, more likely to stay in work. And that's the ultimate answer, getting people off benefits, isn't it? But what, what Simon's not telling you, and the system isn't telling you, is that universal credit will also apply to those people who are in work and receiving tax credits in various forms. What is also not being talked about you know there was an acceptance that you have to wait what that acceptance means is that people will be without money for six or seven weeks at best that's not a delay that is designed into the system so that wait you know a first week to make the application a four week assessment period and then a week to be paid all that time that person is accumulating um, rent debt and that puts strain on on which is why some of these advanced payments are there so and uh, there's greater take but again payments. you know the citizens advice bureau said that only 10 percent of people who claimed universal credit knew about these advanced payments and what is worse you have to pay those advanced payments back within three months in 50 pound chunks now up to nine and, months. And, and that is that is absolutely absolutely unrealistic for people who are in debt and just to say as well a lot of these issues are being rolled out the justice select sorry the the dwp select committee met this week and all of the professionals were unanimous in saying that okay. this has to be paused okay uh, summer clark uh, i mean the evidence in parliament this week indeed heard by that committee was damning tenants on universal credit in newcastle owing more than a million pounds in mm. rent arrears whatever the intentions this benefit is a failure if it's leaving people in debt this benefit is a success if it's getting more people into work for longer, earning more. And you know, it's about the fact that you know, people in work are on it. Well, that's it, precisely the point, if you like, that it's designed to remove some of the perverse incentives that used to exist when you had a, a cluster of but separate so You're benefits. not accepting the, the, almost any problems here. No, I'm, 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 so, look, this is a learning process. That's why this has been rolled out over well, a period of years. It's been learned by the, by the people yeah. who are claiming these benefits. They're the people well, who are suffering. There's aren't a, they? Well, there's no, there's no way. That, there's, there, there, there is no way of rolling out a new system except by piloting it. That's, that will be common practice. What we're seeing is real progress. Richard, I must come in here because, it, you know, it's not any more a trial. From October, there will be 50 job centres a month. It's an aggressive rollout. Whilst there are still literally hundreds of questions that need to be answered by the well, DWP. Shouldn't Labour, Labour be a bit braver here, though, rather than just saying, oh, just pause it, actually say this benefit hasn't worked. Whatever its intentions, mm. it's so complicated, mm. so difficult, it hasn't mm. worked. End it, scrap I don't, it. I don't. I think it is brave saying halt this. You know, halt this really. It's even braver to say halt this really failure, expensive system. Th there are things that could be done. The Labour Party is not against benefit sim simplification. It's right. It's a convol convoluted system that it isn't understandable to anyone, okay. not least the experts. Okay, we'll have to leave it there. Okay. I'm